Let's do a recap of the previous episodes. In the first episode, I taught you guys the best branches that you can choose to build when starting out in this game. And then in the second one, we learned the building process of these operators, how should you cater to their levels and their skill ranks. And now, in this third episode, we're going to integrate the knowledge that we gained from the previous ones to then learn what should a new player do throughout their first few starting months of the game. This episode's topic is on account progression and is probably the best advice that any new player will want to hear about. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is account level because it fits very well in the topic of account progression. A thing that some players may be curious of is does account level affect your game? The answer to this is no, it doesn't affect your gameplay all that much. The only major thing that it affects is the sanity cap. So when you first begin the game, you have a maximum of 82 sanity that can hold. Each time that you level up, you'll be raising the sanity cap yet again. At the early point of the game, every player account level will raise the sanity cap by 1. But then later on in the game, you'll realize that it takes every 5 levels to raise the sanity cap yet again. Sanity refreshes at a rate of once every 6 minutes, meaning to say that within 1 hour, you get 10 sanity. If we put for instance you're a new player, and at the current moment, you have a maximum sanity cap of 100. You use it all at once within a particular day, the next time that you'd have to log in would be within 10 hours. That is if you don't want to overcap your sanity, because by the time it hits 100 out of 100, then you won't be regenerating any more sanity that you can spend in the game. So if you have a higher player account level, you can go all the way up to a sanity cap of 120 or even 135 at the late end of the game. That will allow you even more leeway as to the amount of time that you need to take to log in within 12 hours or even 13.5 hours. So what you're meant to understand from this is that player account level will not affect the progression you have in this game. It's not that you have to reach a certain level in the game in order to have say chapter 4 or chapter 5 unlocked. Instead, the way that the game progresses is based on how much you can clear the stages of the game. The more stages you can clear, the more story chapters will be unlocked for you to play and the more comfortable you're gonna feel to play the events of this game. In order to clear more stages in the game, you're gonna need two main ingredients. The first one is to build your operators properly, as you see in the previous two episodes that I taught you guys in. The second one is your brain. This game will need a little bit of dedication where you bother to read the mechanics of the game, bother to appreciate what both your operators and the enemies do, and with that idea, be able to come up with wonderful strategies that will beat the stages. Nonetheless, still on the topic of account level, they can still be a good gauge for where you should be within the game. Now, how long does it take to reach certain player account levels? For those of you who are new, you may see a lot of triple digit players who are beyond level 100. How long do those levels have to take? For those of you who have never known, I've made a simple table for you guys to reference to. In all of these respective account level range, I've indicated the usual amount of time that it takes to reach those levels. On the right end of the scale, that is usually how long it takes for a free-to-play player. And then on the left end of the scale, that is if you're a monthly card user and you've been paying every single month. If you've been playing this game for a long while and you fall out of the usual time range, if let's say you're taking a shorter time than the range that are stated, it most likely means that you're either using your sanity pack super efficiently, or if not, you're using Originate Prime to refresh your sanity. If you're past the right end of the range, meaning you're taking more than the usual time, it probably means that you're either not playing every single day, so you're skipping some days out, or overcapping your sanity here and there. Simply put, a non-efficient use of your sanity. If you've quit the game for a while, of course you're gonna fall off that usual range. I often get asked as to what do I consider as a new player, a mid-game player, and a late-game player in this game. So I get to answer that in this video. In my opinion, a new player is someone with an account level between 1 to 60, meaning to say that they're playing the game for about 3 months. For a mid-game player, it'll be an account level of between 60 to 90. And then for someone to be considered late-game, they'll either be beyond level 90 or beyond level 100. For those late game players, it'll mean that they've been playing the game for close to a year or slightly over a year. Now I can draw us into the meat of this video, as I've mentioned that this video is best for new players. Let's dive deeper into the first 3 months of experience. Now there is a very good reference tool to teach you how to progress properly within this game. Each time that you click on a certain level, there's a recommended operator level. This is taking the average level of your squad. So if everyone is in general level 10 in your squad, it's probably going to be an easier time than if your operators were all at level 1. 
So this is an indication as to how to build your operators. Early in the game, the level requirements of the stages are not that high, but later on, you'll see it get higher to the point where even in Chapter 3, they will even recommend you to have some elite ones in your squad. Later in the game as well, if you reach the later chapters of the stages, these stages may even get you to have elite tools within your account. But an extra thing that you must understand about this game is that you don't need all your operators to be exactly the level that they stay. This is just saying that if everyone that you bring is at that level, you're probably going to have the easiest of time. But if your operators are still underbuilt, it doesn't mean that it's impossible for you to beat the stage. Because in order to counter that problem, all you need is a good strategy. And that way, even if you bring a bunch of elite ones with maybe only one elite tool, you're still going to be able to beat the stage. That is how a lot of us guide makers try to teach you guys when playing this game. Now Arctis does a fairly decent job when welcoming a new player into the game. They have a whole lot of tutorials to explain the mechanics, and then each time you're exposed to new things in the game, like the store, recruitment, hate hunting, and all that sort of stuff, they'll teach you how to do them. But eventually when all the tutorials come to an end, you're left there hanging as to what are you supposed to do next as a new player? Because if you look at the terminal interface, it looks like there's a lot to do. By the time you reach chapter 2, you have unlocked intermezzi, you have unlocked side story, there's these supply stages, there's whatever this annihilation looking thing is, and it basically gets you wondering what in the world are you supposed to look at in this game. Some people will say that this game is just asking you to explore and figure out what's the best way for you. But some of you here really want pure guidance so that you can understand what's the best steps to take. With the basics of account level and the recommended operator level 2 covered, now I can use this information to then guide you guys the best advice that you want to hear. With every 10 player account level, let me run through with you what are the things that you can do at that player account range. At the early part of the game as someone new, you're not expected to look at everything all at once. Hence, it's best that I help you guys to pinpoint exactly what are some good things that you can be doing at each of these milestones. So let's get the ball rolling with player account level 1 to 10. Arc Knights is a resource management game. Early on, you're going to want a lot of LMD and EXP so that you can level up your operators. Hence, one of the best ways to get these materials that you want is through building a wonderful base. Base is a form of passive income where it generates LMD and EXP even as you're offline from the game. This way, you don't have to only use Sanity to get the materials that you need. Hence, this is the base formation that I'll recommend all new players to start out with as soon as they get to player account level 10. You'll want to build your control center to level 3, your reception room to level 1, one trading post at level 1 that is trading gold, three factories at level 1, two of it producing EXP, and the other one producing gold, two power plants at level 1, two dormitories at level 1, and one workshop at level 1. Do understand that you have three floors of the base at the moment, but there is an additional room that you can build. Just as you start the game, you don't have to build an office yet. Leave that alone for now. Of course, to be able to build your base as I've mentioned, you're going to need to clear certain stages in the game so that you can get the resources you need in order to build these rooms. At the early point of the game, you can clear Chapter 0, Chapter 1, SK2, which is the resource stage to get what you need to build your base, LS2 so that you can farm even more EXP, and CE2 for more LMD. I've mentioned about the recommended operator level 2 earlier in this video. Using that as the reference to build your operators, I would suggest that you build your often used operators to Elite 0, level 30 at this point of the game. If you're unsure about who is best to build, you can refer to the first episode of Arpedia to know how to build your first squad. Account level 1 to 10 happens within your first or second day of the game, so these tips will give you a great head start. If you've cleared all these objectives that are stated, you can then spend your remaining sanity to farm these stages that I've written over here. Stages highlighted in green means that no matter how many times you farm this stage, you can always get the best material drop rate. Whereas stages highlighted in red, it means that these do not offer the best drop rates. However, you can spend your time in these stages to get the materials only as you need. So for instance, if you're running low on EXP and you need to build your operators, it will be perfectly fine for you to be farming LS2. Ensure that you don't spend too much sanity in the raid stages because there are better farming stages to come after this. Moving on to account level 10 to 20. This time around, you want to further improve your base to generate even more passive income. 
So spend your building blocks to level 2 all the existing rooms of your base. You can use this picture as reference for what I mean, and again, try not to build your office just yet. Next up, you'll want to clear even more stages this time around because you're having a stronger account. So clear off Chapter 2, SK3, LS3, CE3, CA3, the first chip stages, and this is the best time to start farming those orundums, so clear off Annihilation 1 as well. In order to clear these stages, there's a higher level ceiling to beat. So this time around, the recommended operator level will be Elite 0, Maximum Level, or Elite 1, Level 10. This is also a good time to start focusing on your skill ranks. As you've learned in Episode 2 of Arcadia, I've taught you guys that skills are even more important than levels. So hence, try to skill rank for all your often used operators if you can. All these will happen within your first week of gameplay before you hit player account level 20. Just as I've shown you guys the farming stages earlier, allow me to also show you what stages you can choose to farm when you're at this level range. About 2 weeks to the game and you'll be between account level 20 to 30. This time, we'll further expand the base by building the 4th floor of the base. You'll be building another trading post trading goal, another factory producing goal, and one more dormitory as well. Do note that there are two more rooms that I've not told you to build, one being the training room and the other being another room of your choice. I'll explain this further later on, but just don't build these rooms that I've not mentioned. In terms of clearing stages, there are even more for you to do. You can clear off Chapter 3, SK4, LS4, CE4, and CA4. Again, level your operators as you need to clear the stages, with the recommended operator level being Elite 1, level 30, to about level 40. This time around, please have your operators already at skill rank 4, otherwise you aren't experiencing the true powers that your operators can have. By clearing even more stages of the game, you have unlocked even more farming stages that you can experience, which is why the list of stages that you can farm is greatly expanded. Now we are at tier level 30 to 40, which happens within the first month of your gameplay, this will be a brilliant time for you to continue working on your base. So level 3 all the left side facilities of your base, meaning the trading post, factory, and the power plants will all be at level 3. Use this picture as a guide for what I mean. Next up, you'll want to promote a 4 star of your choice, anyone at all, as long as you like them, promoting them to Elite 2. This is so that you can borrow Elite 2 support units from your friends that will allow you to clear even more stages of the game, whether it's the story stages or the event stages. This is also a good time for me to recommend adding some friends into the game, whether it's your own friends, or if you don't have anyone else that you know playing Ark Knights at the moment, you can come to my Discord server and find people to add. This way, you can get all the splendid support units that really changes up how you experience this game. More stages for you to clear, this time around, you can try to clear the entire of Chapter 4, SK5 so that you can level 3 the facilities of your base, LS5, CE5, CA5, and the second chip stages. The second chip stages are necessary so that you can get your promotion chips for your 4 stars. Again, to clear all these stages, I recommend you to level your operators to Elite 1, level 50, to 60, and if you can, try to give them skill rank 7 as well. Chapter 4 brings about a lot of great farming stages that you can start to go to to get the materials that you need. This is why you see an even greater amount of stages that you can choose to farm from with your sanity. About 2 months into the game and you'd be between level 40 to 50. At this point, you should finish building your base. However, I'm not going to tell you how to do that just yet. Please watch the base episode that will come very soon. During the episode, I'll teach you how to fill up the remaining rooms of your base, letting you know which is the best formation to have, whether it's 243 or 252 that you may have heard about. This is also a perfect time for you to start building some of the really strong 6 stars within your account all the way up to Elite 2. Now allow me to explain what I mean by really powerful 6 stars. You may have heard of the term meta before. Meta are considered units that are really powerful by the community. These are either people who can clear a large amount of mobs, or if not, they are boss killers, a single tap of their skill, and the boss can just banish from the map. Now for one, I'm not someone who likes to recommend meta operators to players, because I do feel that eventually over time, it can ruin the experience of the game as it can make the game feel extremely easy to play. But I understand that early in the game, as a new player who has just entered, 
the game can be very overwhelming to play and therefore having one if not two meta operators could ease up your game even more and allow you to enjoy it much better. Hence, that is why I recommend to build at least one meta 6 star at the start of the game. Later on, the more that you play, you don't need to put so much emphasis on collecting them all because collecting them all will simply make all stages look really simple to play and that can take away the strategy aspect of this game. The joy of Arknights is the ability to use any operators that you want and to see them perform magic in helping you clear so many of the stages using the power of your brain to strategize great techniques. In any case, let's take a look at this list over here. Now I won't go about explaining how each operator is placed in the roles that I've written, but I'll explain the meaning of the roles. At the top over here, you can see the term Soloist. These are the typical operators that you see in guides of Arknights. If you're someone who has been watching a lot of stage guides and you see us borrowing one particular 6 star, commonly these will be the 6 stars that many people will choose to borrow. So there's common faces like Silver Ash, Aya, Blaze, Torn, Surtur, Mudrock, Kelsit, Chen Alter, and Ling. These are people where if you bring them as the only 6 star while pairing them with other 3 stars and 4 stars, you can find that all stages in the game are pretty much clearable. And that is why I do consider them the strongest of the bunch. Whereas in the second row, these are what I call power supports. These are operators that I feel are very easy for new players to understand. And yet at the same time, once you choose to build them to about Elite 1 or even Elite 2, you'll feel that they are extremely powerful to play with. So at this point of player level 40 to 50, I do think that you have quite a few 6 stars by now and you're bound to at least have one 6 star either in the first row or the second row that I've done over here. So if you can, look at who you have and choose to build one of them to Elite 2. Now what about the 6 stars at the bottom over here where I've not placed them in any rows? Does that mean that these are weaker 6 stars that no one should care about? It's not exactly that. Some of these 6 stars over here are even more powerful than the ones that I listed above. However, I've got my own reasons for not recommending them specifically for new players. Some of them could not be as intuitive to understand. The first time that you pick them up, you may not immediately see what's the use of them in your squad. But after taking some time to learn their kit, you can then unlock their true potential. Some of them can play very supportive units, where you might want to have some other 6 stars first, and then by pairing these 6 stars with them, you can then see your entire team working together and having a great amount of power. Hence, these aren't bad 6 stars at all. Instead, these are 6 stars that I just wouldn't recommend to new players. If you hit about player level 70 or 80, and you have some people over here that you want to build, you are definitely free to do so, because at that point, I do think you have a much better account and building anyone at this point will simply not hurt you at all and instead bring more fun to your game. But of course, despite my advice, if you still want to build any of these 6 stars as your first or second 6 star, please go ahead and do so. Because this game is not restrictive at all, you can simply play it with anyone that you want. So anyways, go ahead, remember to elite to your first 6 star, and if not, let's get back to the tips. Now for clearing of stages, I'm not expecting you to clear the entire chapters. Clear chapter 5 up until S59 and chapter 9 up until 910. This will unlock the remaining important farming stages that you need in the game. At the same time, also clear AP5 so that you can get the chip catalyst that you need to promote your 6 star to Elite 2. And finally, Annihilation 3 along with the rotating annihilations in order for you to experience the best stages to farm your orundums. As usual, the level requirement will be raised, so I recommend your operators to be at Elite 1 maximum level, but prioritize their skill ranks to be at skill rank 7 first before you level them up. Of course, these tables will show you the best farming stages at this player level range. By now you'd be entering the third month of your game, and this is where the game gets extremely fun to play because you've taken the correct steps for the best enjoyment. There are only a few more pointers that are important for you to note since you've built a great foundation in your account. First off, you are now able to freely choose any operators that you want to be promoted to Elite 2. Choose about 1-3 to three of them, and I don't really care who you choose, as long as you truly like them. This game is meant to be your own personal experience, so it's only right for me to advise that you follow your heart and choose whoever that you want to build so that your playtime is personalized to you. You can now also give masteries to the 6 star that you've chosen to build. This way, you can experience the full power of what it means to be a 6 star. You should also start clearing CE6 and LS6. 
And at this point, there is no need for me to guide you as to how to level your operators. You should just level up the operators as and when you want. If you want some of your operators to be an elite tool, or you want to build even other operators that you haven't experienced to elite one, go ahead and do so, and experience all the many operators that this game has to offer. Here are the final tables that you need to see as to what you can farm at this player level range. So, beyond level 60, what are you supposed to do? What's the next best tip that you can give me, Kukikaze? Well, if you've reached this point of the game, it's time for me to tell you to play the game as your heart desires. Really, this is Arc Knights. This is your own personal adventure. You've already built the best foundation of the game with all the tips that I've given you, and at this point, it's for you to decide how you want to play it. Build any operators that you desire, give yourself all sorts of challenges, and clear all these stages that you have not yet to do. The most important tip that I have to give you is play the game in a way that you can have fun. That way, you know that this can be the best game that you have ever played. As a fresh new player of the game, you shouldn't be playing intimacy and side story just yet. But by the time you hit beyond level 60 of player account, it's perfectly fine for you to try all of these events and get that record restore rewards as well as original primes from clearing these stages for the first time. In the previous tips that I gave, I've asked you guys to stop at chapter 5 and 9. But once you feel confident, you can continue into the later chapters like chapter 6, 7 and 8 and even 10 that is to come very soon. This way, you can unlock even more farming stages that are better than what I've recommended just now. You can also revisit the stages that you have cleared before and clear them in challenge mode so that you can get even more original primes for yourself. With a much stronger account, it's also a good time for you to try the training grounds of all these daily stages so that you can get the contract bounty to buy all these fresh goodies that you might want. And lastly of all, if you're wondering what's a good player account level to experience the game mode of integrated strategies, now that you've hit beyond level 60, it is the perfect time for you to go ahead and give that super fun game mode a try to enjoy Arc Knights to the fullest extent. With that, here's a summary table of all the tips I gave for beyond level 60. Time for the final part of the video. What if there's an event? There are one week, two weeks, and three weeks long event that always happens in Arc Knights. When that occurs, as a new player of the game, should you be doing something about it? So let me explain to you what to do. If let's say it's a one week long event, this is what I call a mini event. Mini events are very distinctive in the way that they don't have EX stages. They only have normal stages for you to clear. This event usually also has a event currency which is not only farmable within the event stages but all the other stages in the game. When this happens, all you need to do is to play the event stages, clear them all at once and then afterwards you can go back to your regular story stages, your supply stages to continue farming whatever that you want. So basically to put for a mini event, try to clear it as far as possible, wherever they stop it's completely okay and then afterwards you can continue all the previous tasks that I put forth at all the different account level ranges. Then what about 2 weeks long event? If the 2 weeks long event is a contingency contract, at whatever player account level you are, you can go ahead and try the contingency contract. Try both the permanent stages and the daily stages and reach as high of a risk as possible. For the daily stages, try to reach risk 8. If you can't, risk 7, 6 or 5 will just be alright. And then for the permanent one, risk 18 will give you the maximum rewards but if not, if you can only clear it at risk 12, 10 or even 5, that is perfectly fine, just do as your account is able to. And at the same time, you can still concentrate on all of those tips that I've given you just now. Finally, if it's not a mini story event and it's not a contingency contract, this event is at least 2 weeks long, that's a sign to tell you that this is a mega event. Mega events usually have a lot of rewards in their stores. The event currency can only be found by playing the event stages and there are usually EX stages that you can play within the event. These events introduces new enemies and new mechanics for you to face and they are some of the most fun times that you can have in Arc Knights. When that happens and you are a new player, the thing that I will ask you to do is to drop everything that I've told you so far. Yes, that's right. Do not focus on building your base just yet. Do not focus on clearing the story chapters. Put your fullest attention into this event because it's giving you a lot of free rewards, great materials that you can use to build up your operators to all those recommended operator level that I told you just now. Once the two weeks or three weeks long of the duration finishes, you can then go back to building your base or trying to clear even more of the chapters in the game. Events also offer the best farming stages in the game, better than the story stages that I've mentioned just now. Hence, that is why I ask you to fully concentrate on them 
in the meantime, and then afterwards go back to clearing all the little objectives that I told you. If you can't complete some of the stages, like some of the normal stages or EX stages of the event, do not feel disheartened because you are still a new player of the game. If you are player account 40 to 50, I'm not expecting you to clear things like EX 6, 7 or 8. Maybe you're even stuck at the 8th or the 10th stage of the normal stages. That's perfectly fine by me. The main importance is to farm that event currency and squeeze out all the delicious rewards that are so beneficial for a new player like you. And with that, that's every single thing that you need to know as a new player as to how to properly progress in the game. Come back to this video whenever, revisit it to see if you've completed all the objectives. And by the time you've hit the point of level 60 in the game, that is when I can say that I don't need to guide you anymore. This game is truly your adventure to decide on. And I hope that you can enjoy Ark Knights to the fullest. If not, I really hope this video has helped you out so, so much. And I shall see you guys in the next episode of Arpedia, which is on the topic of re-rolling accounts. Alright, that's that from me. I shall see you guys. Bye-bye.